Well, one day at a time. Remember, remember that this morning. One day at a time. One day at a time. Well, we're going to be ministered to in special music song this morning by Norma Jean Wilkes. some beautiful ministry and song Amen. all morning long now if I can just keep up we'll be in good shape amen 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 let us pray this morning our father in heaven Lord again we we lift those that are in desperately need of you first and foremost we'll lift those ones within the sound of our voice father and, oh, Lord, I'm not necessarily talking about just lost people, but those that are in desperately in need of you, those who, Lord, have scooted over and they're perhaps seated a little further from you than they should be, or perhaps those that have got lost in themselves and carried you to places where you probably didn't want to go. No, I'm not just talking about lost people, Father, but saved people that have lost their, their focus and that focus in you. Father, I thank you for each and every soul that's in the house today. And Lord, I pray if there's one here today that this is the day they need to recommit, rededicate 
get back on your path, this would be the day that that would happen. I pray, Lord, this morning for the, the one here that, that has been ever so close to say, you know, I've, I've almost become a Christian, almost, but I just haven't been willing to die to myself in order to let the Lord have me. And Father, I pray for that one today or that two, whatever there may be here. This would be the day that would be looked back upon as a day of celebration in their spiritual life of being born again. Bless this time, Lord. Be with the message. Use it in the way you so desire in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, I, I like that, that <laughs> you find comfort in other people's misery sometimes. Uh, uh, I don't mean that in a mean way, but I mean that especially if it's in a saint. But I'm saying when I'm around the world and the lost world and you see everybody has their own, their own thing, you know. I like to, although I haven't had much of an opportunity yet this year, but I like to be able to sit around the fire and just play the guitar, sing some songs, you know, just something that's very non-eventful, but yet very relaxing. Or sit on the front porch and watch the neighbors go by and go, there he is, it must be springtime, he's out on the porch. <laughs> They're probably thinking it's still winter. <laughs> uh, I, I like to do those simple things. I like to be able to take a, you know, hold my wife's hand and go for a walk. And, uh, and uh, we get rambunctious and we get out on the railroad tracks and do all those bad things, wild and crazy. Uh, hop on the motorcycle and go off someplace. Uh, but everywhere I go, the great thing about that is I'm always thanking the Lord for what he's given me Amen. and allowed me to do that. And that, that I get to take him with me. Wherever I go, I get to take him with me. And, and that's pretty cool when you think about it, that I've got that kind of power, that I have the power of God within me that I can take anywhere I go. Yeah. Um, and and that, that's a wonderful gift that we have when we've trusted Jesus Christ as our Savior. And I get next to the people of the world and I hear them saying, uh, I hear the woes and the trials and the tribulations and the likes and the dislikes, and I hear them talking about their lucky rabbit's foot. And I hear them talking about my horoscope said this morning. Yeah. Uh, I, hear them, you know, I hear them talking about you know, their good luck charm, or, or, or they have a lucky star with their name. And, and I'm thinking, wow, wow. They just don't get it. Now, what was the offertory song? One day at a time. One day at a time. And I have in my note here, uh, in my message, for the Lord laid upon my brain, uh, that uh, uh, because he lives, I can see tomorrow. Now, we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but because he lives in me, I can see tomorrow. And when I heard that one day at a time, I'm like, thanks, Lord. Thanks. When you and I face tomorrow, it's uncertainty, isn't it? And, and uncertainty, I'll admit, uncertainty can rattle us. It can rattle the strongest spiritual person. Uncertainty has a, you know, it's, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. But, Ben, did you have, you, that's always the fear of the unknown. unknown. See, we know how to fill in all those blanks. Uh, our flesh does that to us. But when, we're, when we face tomorrow, the uncertainty can certainly be unnerving to us, uh, especially when we're plagued with a feeling of helplessness or something's out of our reach or we just don't know how this is going to go. We can be plagued with that feeling of, 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 of helplessness or, or even worse, that feeling of insignificance, like I don't matter. I don't matter. I don't matter to these people. Um, nobody cares. Oh, but wh wh who will care for my soul? As we, we know the psalmist cried out. But those are the tough parts. But you know, when you got the Lord in you, and you remember, hey, wow, I'm not so insignificant after all. Uh, I've got him with me. I have him with me. He's going where I'm going. I'm going into that uncertainty, but I'm taking him with me. And as long as he's with me, it's going to be all right. Amen. It's going to be all right. That, but we call that, what do we call that, folks? We call that faith. 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 It's a simple faith. I'm going to be all right. As long as I'm not trying to do it myself. Amen. I'll be all right. 
You know, the disciples of our Lord, and we're all disciples. If we've come to trust Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are disciples. Uh, and, and, and the disciples of our Lord, if I can take you to the time of his earthly ministry, as he walked this very earth that we are on today, as he walked this earth, the, those disciples, can you imagine them? I mean, look at what they have got to see him do. Lazarus, come forth. Wow. Uh, bend down on the ground and write something in the dirt. And watch all the accusers of this woman flee. You know, as an investigative mind, that question kills me. Um, it's probably not going to matter when I get to heaven. But on earth, I'm thinking, Lord, one of the first questions I'm asking you when, you get, when I get to heaven is, what would you write? <laughs> what would you write? What would you write? <laughs> made all those accusers run. I don't know. Was he, was he, was he itemizing their sins? with their names next to him? I don't know. But I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> We don't know the future. And the disciples of the Lord walking with him, seeing what he has done in their presence, seeing what he has done in their life, seeing that they're all sitting around, what are we going to do with this 5,000 people? And this little boy with a, with a packed lunch comes up and goes, watch this. Whew. I'm going to feed them all. Amen. And the little boy still had something to eat. <laughs> now, I don't care who you are. That's pretty neat. <laughs> But the same God lives within each and every one of us that are saved. The same God that did all those things lives within us. And if he doesn't live within you because you do not possess him, you can. Amen. You can. And guess what? It don't matter what you just put in the offering plate. Nope. That has nothing to do with it. Nothing at all. The only thing it has to do with it is he, he went to that cross and died for you. But I can imagine the disciples that were with him during his earthly ministry. And that continuing companionship they had with him. And the things that they watched him do and bring them through to, to wake him up on a ship. That he can stand and rebuke the winds and the waves. Peace. Be still. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, can, I can imagine, come forth, Lazarus. I can imagine the woman, when he perceived all virtue had gone out of him because she touched the hem of his garment. And she was cured of an issue of blood for 12 years. Whew. That same, same Jesus lives in me. I can imagine what these guys felt like and how it challenged their faith to know, to know beyond any doubt at all that he's leaving them. They're no longer going to reach out and touch him. One's never going to Lay their head against his bosom. He's going to be gone. He's going to be gone. That must have been terrifying. Facing the future without the comfort of his continuing companionship. And I want to tell you this morning from a personal standpoint, I don't face that kind of fear. Amen. I don't face a fear of a future without his continued companionship because he's made me so many promises that he's always, always, always with me. Always with me. Always with me. And the closer I stay with him, the louder I hear it. Yep. The closer I stay to him, the louder, the louder I hear it. Turn to John chapter 14 with me this morning.
in the event I don't tell you to mark that chapter, mark that chapter. <laughs> in John chapter 14, we, I, I read to you out of verse, beginning in verse 15 through 18, Jesus says, if you love me, it's pretty simple, isn't it? If you love me, keep my commandments. But he starts with the word if. if. He's not talking to the people that don't love him. He's only talking to the ones who do. And that's very important to understand this morning. He's only talking to the ones who do. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Man, there's some great, there's some great eyes in there, isn't there? Mm-hmm. And not a one of them are about me. Amen. They're all about him, every one of them. Every one of them are about him. Disciples. Those of us who have trusted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we're no different than those disciples that believed on him, believed on the name of Jesus. We walk with him. We're no different than them. Disciples, there's a call throughout God's word. There's a call. There's a call to trust in this Jesus But the call is deeper. The call is to also trust in his faith that he has. That his father gave him us. You see, we can't do that. Only he can. And that's the faith that Jesus has. And he wants us to have faith in his faith. Amen? Amen? Have faith in his faith. There's a call. There's a call that, that, that to trust in this faith of Jesus to hold you. There's a call that, that where you go, whenever you call him, he is authentic. He is the real deal. There's that call for us to carry that with us and understand. There's a call of throughout the Lord's word for us to learn of him. Learn of him. Those are his words. There's a call for us, and I'm not going to turn there for the sake of time, but if you're taking notes in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, there's a call for there to be preachers and teachers that are sent by him. And And the reason for that is there's a call for the saints to reach closer and closer and closer to that perfecting until he comes. It's a continuous endeavor by the saints of God. To strive for until he comes. There's a call to the great commission. A partnership and friendship with Jesus Christ one on one. In Matthew chapter 28 verses 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Amen. He's commanded each and every one of us as disciples to do all of those things, to stay close to him, to stay close. He says, I'll be in you, I'll abide with you. But he's commanded us to do those things. There's a call to judging ourselves by his word. I'm not going to turn there again because of time, for the sake of time with you this morning. But if you're taking notes, you will see, you will see in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 31 that if you judge yourself by this, he won't have to do it for you. Amen. That's, what he te- that's basically what he tells us. If I'll judge myself by this today, I won't suffer his judgment today or tomorrow because I failed to judge myself. That's what he's saying. He's not, 
I don't have to worry about judgment at the white throne. I'm in. Amen. I'm in because of everything that he did for me. That's right. And I've trusted it, and I hold to it, and I know that he's got me. Amen. No matter how much of a rascal I am, That's right. he's got me. It's the greatest safety net on earth. There's a call to rewards. There's a call to rewards that he wants to be able to reward each and every one of us. He wants the crown of righteousness, the crown of life. He wants to give us crowns. He wants us to be something in his millennial kingdom as we, we, we reign with him for a thousand years when we come back to the face of this earth. He wants us to be kings. He wants us to be princes. He wants us to be judges. He, he wants us to be something for him. And all that is based on what we are for him now. Amen. That's what it's all based on. It's called rewards. There's a call to those things. But in order to grasp that call, we have to understand him. In order to understand him, we have to hear him. In order to hear him, we have to be present where he is at. Which is right here in his word, right here in this house. That's what we have to do. What does he say that's so important? Turn to John chapter 1 with me. We see a pattern of his disciples and what he says. John chapter 1, verse 43, if you will, the day following Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip. And findeth Philip. And I'll say something to you right now that as I prayed for the Holy Spirit of God to knock on your heart's door, and if you're feeling that during the time of invitation today, that's God answering a prayer. Amen. That's God doing his office work. That's the Holy Spirit of God testifying of Jesus. That's what's going on. And when that goes on, he's looking for you. Okay? And I, and I got a news flash for you. You can get as far into that pew as you want. You can hide your sight from me or anybody else, but there's nowhere to hide that heart of yours when he's after it. Amen. Nowhere to hide. And we see that in verse 43, the day following Jesus would go forth into Galilee, and he findeth Philip, and he saith unto him, two words, follow me. That's Jesus' instruction to his disciples. Follow me. Don't follow the world. Don't follow the trends. Follow me. Pretty simple. If we took a test, a written test today, what's, what's Jesus, what's the first thing he told me to do? Follow me. I better take that. You guys will be here a long time. <laughs> he shows us something else in John chapter 1. Look at verse 46. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? He sees Jesus coming. Philip's following Jesus. Philip's witnessing for Jesus. But Nathanael says, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? That's where Jesus was coming from. We've talked about stereotyping. There, he, Jesus got stereotyped. <coughs> And Philip, who Jesus went out and found, this is what happens to you, by the way, when, when, when the Holy Spirit of God knocks on your heart's door and he's telling you, Jesus, Jesus, he died for you, I sent him. He's always been, he always will be, I sent him to die for you. Jesus, once you have him, you can't shake him. 
Jesus. He'll abide with you forever. He said that just now. He's got you. He'll go wherever you take Him. Even if it's not a nice place, He'll go with you. So that you can keep having an opportunity to hear Him and listen. He'll go. He'll go. He won't jump out. So that He wouldn't, He made sure you were sealed so that He couldn't jump out. When he's talking to you, he's telling you something. He's telling you, if I'm really in there, I can't get out. That's why the Father, at a time unknown to me, is going to go, come up hither. And whatever I'm in is out of here. But will you be? Will you be out of here? If it's five minutes from now, even if it's before I conclude this message, will you be out of here? So we see in verse 46, Nathanael said unto him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? And Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Come and see. So the first thing we get is Jesus says, follow me. And when you follow him, you get to see some pretty neat stuff in your life when you follow Jesus Christ. Amen, saints? Amen. We get to see some pretty neat stuff. I got to see a lot of neat stuff yesterday because I followed him. We all did. But, and because we followed him and we got to see this neat stuff, we got something to talk about. Amen. And when, you, and when we run into somebody that's like, I don't know, I just don't get it. Come and see. Come and see. Somehow, if you've not trusted Christ as your Savior, He got here, somehow you got to come and see notice today. Come and see. Come and see. And then He says something else. If you'll turn to Mark chapter 1 with me. See, here, here's the thing about this Jesus, the saving Jesus, the holding Jesus, the not forsaking Jesus. Here's the thing about that Jesus. He don't stand still. He's not like this. Oh, no. He has a mission, the Great Commission. And he sent his saints as verification and as ambassadors of that. And he doesn't stand still because he has sent the Comforter. And when he sends the Comforter of the Holy Spirit, he sends conviction. And when he sends conviction, that's his polite way of going, Yeah. (laughs) Okay? He sends conviction. And when, when, when you get conviction, and, and you're, and you're, but, and, and there he is, he's getting a little farther away. He's getting a little farther away because you're like, huh? Oh, it's all about me. I'm just, oh, there he is. He's like, wait, let me catch up with you. That's the way it really works. That's, so you see, he'll say, follow me. Follow me means I'm not standing still. You've got to move. You've got to do something. You have to have action. That's a verb, by the way. You have to have action. You have to do something. He didn't say, just carry me around with you. He said, follow me. Tell other people. After you followed me, you're going to see some neat stuff now. You're going to tell them because you've seen all this neat stuff. If you know what, if you're one of those people who haven't followed him, you're not seeing neat stuff, so that's why you don't tell people to come and see. That's right. You can't contain it. 
If the Lord's done something for you, great. You can't contain it. You're going to say, come and see. Amen. And then they're going to get a taste. Come and see that the Lord is good. They're going to get that taste. They're going to get exactly what they came after. Because he's going to provide it. I'm not. You're not. He is. And when he provides it. And then we see here in this verse of scripture, in verse so, I think I'm 17. Jesus saith then to them, Come ye after me. He didn't say come. That doesn't mean come last, come second. Come ye after me. You're going to have to follow me. You're going to have to chase me. You're going to have to keep up with me. What's that mean? That means if you truly have the Holy Spirit of God in you because you truly, you really, really, really got saved, He's going to convict you and give you the little... Uh-huh. uh-huh. And, and, and He's going to convict you of things to do for Him. Those come and sees, come and sees, come and sees. And He's going to send you out. And when He sends you out, you're going to have to keep up with Him. You have to keep up with Him. But in order to do that, we have to have a closeness. We have to have a commitment. I have a closeness to my wife. I have a commitment to my wife. I took a vow before God. I have a closeness to her, and I have a commitment to her. But he took a vow to me. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll always abide with you. I'll seal you to the day of... I mean, he just promised me after promise, after promise, after promise. But we need closeness. We need commitment. Eleven of these apostles during his earthly ministry were so committed that they could not fathom, could not fathom a future existence without his companionship. So he sought something. He sought something to comfort them. And I take you back to where I ask you not to lose it in Mark chapter, or John chapter 14. Are you there, church? Yep. Got made it back. And I reiterate verse 16 to you this morning. And I will pray the Father. Now I'm going to tell you something. If you're a lost individual without Christ and you come to this altar this morning to kneel down and pray, I can't pray it for you. I can't save you. I have not the power. I'm just saying, come and see. Come and see. And when you come and see, and when you kneel down at this altar, and you truly, truly believe that this Jesus can and will do all that he said that he'll do for you. When you truly believe that, and you, you believe that in your heart, and you call upon his name in prayer, you've got a guarantee. Yes, you ye shall be saved. Ye shall be saved. Amen. My brother Ron Bargerstock lost a leg due to problems of the flesh. But if he could ride a bicycle, he can still ride one in his mind. Amen? You can't take it away. And I'm going to tell you something. When the blood of Jesus gets all over you, God looks at you, and that's what he sees from the throne of heaven. He don't see the sin you committed yesterday. He doesn't see the sin you're going to commit tomorrow. He looks upon that blood. What a gracious gift. What a gracious gift. And it's free to us. It wasn't free to him. He was tortured. But we need closeness and commitment. This verse 16 again we see. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. Church, listen to Jesus. Listen to the real Jesus. That he may abide with who? You. How long? 
My Jesus is not lying to you. He will abide with you forever. Forever. Even when you grieve Him. I'm not going there, but 4.30 of Ephesians. Ephesians 4.30 tells you, Grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby in which you are sealed until the day of come up hither. Jesus, His bodily presence with His disciples was very brief. Very brief. This is, I imagine this was really devastating to them. But He promised them something here. And He promised it to you and I too. And you may not always be abiding with Jesus. I may have days that I'm a little bit further away from Him than I should be. I may have moments that I'm a little bit further away from Him. I'm further away than I should be. But you know what? He's still in me. He's still in me. Because He told me He will abide with me forever. So I can't shake Him. He dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Verse 17. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. The world can't understand this. The lost. If you're here without Christ, you can't understand that he'll always be with me. He'll always stay with me, no matter how much of a mutt and a rascal I am. No matter how much I might have backslidden, he's still going to stay with me. He's still going to hold me, and nobody's going to pluck me out of his hand. Really? Amen. Really? We're, we, we're used to a punitive society. We're used to being punished for the things that we do wrong. But His punishment only comes in this world upon the believer that is acting disobedient to Him. That's the one that gets punished in this world by Him. The rest, their punishment is waiting in store for another day. But that's eternal punishment. I will never see eternal punishment because He, he promised me. Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. Way back there it was foretold of. God with us. The scripture wasn't talking about three years, 12 years. The scripture was talking about God with us. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit a far greater blessing than his earthly presence could have ever been. Think about it. Think about it. He was, he was in a limited state there. Oh, he could do all kinds of great things. But there's only so many people that he could hang out with at a time. He could hang out with a whole church full of people now. Because he indwells them. Because he promised he'd do it that way. That's that comforter that we get today. First Corinthians chapter 3 as we close. You know, as we face tomorrow, we don't do it alone Amen. when we have Christ. When we face tomorrow and we're following Him, we're following Him into tomorrow. Not ourselves. And when, if you've tasted that and you've experienced that, you're going to want to say, come and see. Come and see. Taste that God is good. You're going to want to see those things. As you face tomorrow, you need to accept by faith this one and only Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. As you face tomorrow... You need to go into tomorrow with Him and not alone by yourself. Because when He comes to you and you say yes to Him, He justifies you just as though you've never sinned. Thank you, Lord. Then He sets you apart. Amen. 
from all the rest of the world, from all those lost souls, he sets you apart. How does he do that? The comforter, the Holy Spirit comes within you and then he seals you up so you can't leak. You don't have to go back for a plug. None of those things. Don't need a tire. You don't need a Holy Spirit pressure gauge. He's in you. John, or I mean 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. As I'll ask our song leader to come as we begin to prepare for the time of invitation. Verse 16 says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. My first challenge to everybody here in the sound of my voice today is this question. Are ye the temple of God? Does he Take up residency in you. See, God doesn't buy apartment. He doesn't rent. He owns. He doesn't rent. There's no evicting. You can't evict the owner. He owns you. How do I know that? Because it says, if any, because know you not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. And if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. You see, it belongs to him. When he moves in, it's now his. It's all his. Question is, does he reside in your temple? Does he reside in your temple? If the answer to that question is no this morning, I bid you to come to this invitation, you first and foremost, if the answer is no. I ask that you not allow Satan, who is going to work really powerfully right this moment, to hold you back. He's going to give you every excuse under the sun. But I'm going to tell you something. You stepping out in the greatest power there is on the face of this earth when you step out for Jesus Christ. Amen. You step out in a place of brothers and sisters in Christ who are saints together with you. You step out in a place that should he call us home at the final amen. All those saints in this house are going to leave with you at the same time. Don't be the one. Don't be the one that has heard this gospel message that can't ever go to heaven because if that takes place five minutes from now and you've heard the gospel, you're you're done. done. Your opportunities are over for all of eternity. You say, well, pastor, somebody told me if I get my head chopped off, I'll go to heaven. That's not true. That's only during the time of tribulation hour when people who have not heard the gospel, now understand it. And for the cause of Christ, they will not take the mark of the beast. But they still have to lose their head for the cause of Christ. But for all who have heard the gospel, once that harpizo, the snatching away of the saints, takes place, it's over. It's over. Whatever the need is, you come. You stand with me as we sing this invitation hymn. 243.